Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. And in this channel, I try to provide um, Oracle education for your personal and professional development. And uh, if you certainly like content like this, uh, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, enable notifications, like and share our videos uh, with your peers. Um, today, I'm trying to bring to you uh, an interesting uh, Oracle tool. Um, it is called R config, uh, R config right here. So um, what I'm trying to do today is uh, converting a single instance database into a RAC database. RAC stands for Real Application Clusters, certainly. And um, certainly in your environment, you might have had some scenarios where uh, you would need, you know, uh, to first of all uh, spin up um, a single instance database, and then eventually, you know, convert that database to RAC. Now, uh, there are some case examples. Um, for me personally, um, when I am trying to create um, um, a standby database from a RAC database, um, I typically create that standby database as a single instance database. And then, of course, um, if that standby database is sitting on a cluster system as well, then I try to you know, convert that single instance into a cluster. Um, in some environments as well, you might have um, production databases um, where you would be, as a DBA, required to create um, you know, other lower environment databases for the purposes of testing, development, um, where you would, you know, maybe use uh, technologies like Arman Duplicate and create those databases. And then certainly, of course, uh, you want to convert those single instance databases into RAC databases. Now, there are a few ways to do that. Uh, basically, um, I've worked with two ways. Um, I can do that using the Database configura uh, Configuration Assistant, DBCA, uh, but that kind of has a lot more moving parts. Uh, but I want to share with you today um, how to do that using R config utility. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with R config, uh, it is a non interactive command line utility uh, used for converting a single instance database to a RAC database. Now, it is usually installed by default as an executable file under um, um, your database home or your grid home. So, um, certain things you would need to consider uh, before using R config. Uh, the benefits for me, particularly, it is it is a lightweight utility. Now, the, it gets a little tricky because, of course, you have to go into the detail of trying to um, um, convert, you know, the XML file that comes within it. So, in the process of showing you this, I'm certainly hoping that you would follow along and understand um, what a cool tool this uh, R config uh, represents for us uh, DBAs. So. On my cluster system, um, I certainly do have a single instance database. Now, let me take a look at my Etsy or a tab file. Etsy or a tab file. Now, I have a few databases in here, right? I have some cluster systems, and then I have um, this C SI2 rack. So, single instance to rack. That's how I call it. So. Uh, let's take a look at this. So let me set of all, let me first of all make sure that you know see which of the databases are up and running. So PS minus EF, and if I grab for a PMON process, I certainly do have uh, my SI2 rack. So um, database is running. So uh, let me go ahead and set my environmental variables to that, and then I would use my server control. Uh, first of all, to ascertain the status of my database. So uh, let me go ahead and check the status of my database, minus D, uh, SIRAC2. And let's take a look at that and see. Now, for this to be able to run, um, certainly your single instance uh, would be using automatic shared, uh, my, uh, automatic storage management. So. Uh, the data files, you know, um, the SP files, and the online redo log files, all of that should have been, your database should have been created with all of that uh, sitting in ASM storage. So uh, my instance of this is running, and it's running only on rack node one. 
So um, let's check the configuration of that database. So I would still use the same server control. And for that, I will check the config of the database. That is how you simply can look at the configuration of what your database is. So uh, basically looking at this, uh, the configuration of my database, of course, um, what I really typically want to see here is type single, right? So this tells me that this database is running as a single instance database, all right? So by the end of this process, what I expect to see when we check the configuration of this database is for this database, for the type to be running as a rack database, okay? So if we take a look at some of the other things here, of course, my unique name is, my unique name and my DB name are the same. Uh, my SP file, of course, is located on ASM storage. Um, and let's take a look here. Uh, the disk groups, um, FRA and data, and um, it's configured on rack mode one. So like I mentioned earlier, the R config uh, is installed certainly as a utility in your Oracle home. So um, as the user Oracle, of course, uh, who owns the installation of the Oracle software. Uh, let's go ahead and CD into our Oracle home. So if my environmental variable is set, then I certainly can CD into my Oracle home. And if I print my working directory, of course, this is my Oracle home. Now, within my Oracle home, what I need to, where I need to go to is under assistance. And under assistance, I would go to R config. Now, let me show you under assistance. First of all, let's run a listing on uh, under assistance. You would see the R config folder here. So if we CD into R config and we run a listing on that, you would have the doc and you have the sample XML files. Now, what it does, R config does is um, it runs using the sample XML files, right? Uh, there are two XML files sample SML, XML files. Uh, so uh, there is one to convert to an admin managed and there is one to convert to a policy managed uh, uh, rack database. So in this particular case, um, when we were looking here at the configuration, um, typically I like creating my, 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 my rack databases to be, matched, to be managed uh, by, you know, ad, by the admin, okay? I like them being admin, Manage. I don't typically, you know, um, work with policy managed rack databases. So this is the original sample file. Now, if I cut the contents of this sample file, it's an XML file. Now you have to be a little bit on the careful side when you edit the XML file. So this is an example of what an XML file looks like. So what I'm going to do right here is so that I preserve the integrity of the XML file, I would copy uh, that XML file. So I would first of all, copy this XML file and create kind of a backup, right? I would just copy it and create a backup and I would call it maybe dot original, right? Or underscore original, however you want to choose your naming original, however you want to choose your naming conventions, right? Because um, I would have to make, some changes to this XML file before I run um, the R config utility. So in order to make the changes, of course, I would use my VI editor or whichever editor you choose. And I would open up that XML file and make sure that I make some changes to some parameters. Now, um, I would make the following changes that you see right here. Uh, on the convert verify, the convert verify, when it says here that yes, uh, it means if I run the R config, it is going to go ahead and try to convert that single instance to a database. Uh, but I will change that right now to just only first because I wanna run a test. If you run it with the verify equals only, it runs a pre-check. And if there are some errors in your configurations, then it communicates that to you, okay? Now, the second thing I'm going to change is the source database home. Now, it comes in and I'm not sure why, I, it keeps puzzling me that this is an installation of Oracle 12C, uh, but the config file has for Oracle home, uh, 
um, 11G. So I'm not sure why that should be something maybe I suggest uh, if I may make some suggestions uh, for Oracle to kind of pay attention to as they prepare uh, more recent versions. So for the source DB, source DB home, I would use my current home for my uh, database. And um, you want to make sure that you know what your database home is. If you don't know, you can open up another terminal like this. And then maybe you know you run uh, or view the contents of your Etsy or a tab file, right? And you want to make sure that your Oracle home is exactly the same. Now, the other thing with our config as well is you have to specify a target home. Now, this target home should be rack enabled. Right, because once you install the Oracle software, if you're installing the Oracle software for a single instance, it is not going to enable the rack components, right? Uh, but when you install, when you perform an Oracle software installation on a cluster um, as a rack installation, um, it will, of course, enable the rack cluster. So we typically call it a rack enabled Oracle home. So we want to make sure that the home to which we are targeting should be a rack enabled home. So, and of course my current Oracle home is certainly a rack enabled home. The next thing we are going uh, to configure here is the database service identifier. Here it says sales from the default XML file, but this is where I correct it to single instance to rack. So that is the name of my current Oracle database. Now, one of the things it does here, and I've seen in more recent versions, it really doesn't ask you um, for the password for sys, uh, but in this version, we're gonna input the password for sys in clear text, which I think of course is an improvement to Oracle because you certainly don't want to be, you know, writing passwords for elevated users like sys, system, Oracle, or any of those guys. Uh, in plain text anywhere on uh, your system. So uh, the password certainly uh, in my particular case is Oracle. So I will leave it as such. Uh, I would now certainly configure the notes, right? Um, I'm gonna look for where I have the notes and I would see here, um, instead of note one, uh, my cluster is configured with rack node one and rack node two as the two nodes. So I would replace the name for rack node one for, for node one with rack node one. And I certainly would replace the name for rack for node two with rack node two. Now remember, if your cluster where if your cluster system has more than two nodes, you would have to add that node list. So I would have to, you know. If it has four nodes, I would have to copy, you know, this, for example, uh, add another line, add for, for, for rack node three, add another line, add for rack node four, if I have those number of nodes. But my cluster system has just two nodes. So I'm going to stick to those for now. The next thing I am going to configure is, of course, uh, the instance prefix. Now, remember with rack, um, just as you see here, um, if I set, I source my environment here, or right, ENV, and I have a rack database that is currently running right now. So RAM DB, um, and I server control uh, status uh, database minus DB, RAM DB. If I verify the status of this, it tells me that the instance RAM DB1 on node one, the instance RAM DB2 on node two. Now, the reason I show this is because in uh, for, for an Oracle database, an Oracle rack database, um, the, the instance is, uh, there, is, there is a suffix one and two added to, no, to, to the instances that are running on the corresponding nodes. So the RAM DB in this case would be the prefix. So I'm using that so that I can set the premise in order to change what I would call um, the instance prefix for my database. Because my database name is the seed, a, a single instance to rack, I would add SI2 rack 
so that when it eventually converts into a rack database, the instances will be SI2 rack one and SI2 rack two. Okay. So I do have um, the password is done, uh, the source and target homes are done. Um, where you have the target database area and the target flash recovery area, it is defaulted to ASM. So what I would do here is it is this defaulted to ASM disk group here. So uh, in our documentation, it says we have to eliminate this whole plus ASM disk, uh, ASM DG completely. So let's go ahead and eliminate those four, the target database area and the target flash recovery area. So those are the only changes I am going to make. So right now I would save this file, uh, colon WQ. Uh, let me cut the contents of that file and just to see that I have made you know, the right changes. So uh, DB verify is only uh, source home, target home, Oracle SID, Oracle password, uh, the name of the nodes, rack node one, rack node two, and um, uh, the instance prefix, which would be uh, SI2, uh, single instance to rack. And um, I removed the ASMDG. So at this point, uh, we would run the R config. Uh, remember I said, if you run it as only, it does a pre-check. Uh, so let's go ahead and let me just source uh, which R config am I going to run. It tells me that the R config utility is running from the 12 to 1 home, which is exactly what I want. So in order to run this, all I have to do is I type R config and I source that, uh, that config file. So the config file is convert to rack admin managed and then I run this. It's gonna take a few uh, to perform some checks and then we wait and see how that works. So if you're someone who likes stealing the logs, um, uh, our config logs are also where we have our database uh, configuration assistant logs and our database upgrade logs. Um, I would see the, let me clear the screen here so that we, so let me see the to that location and I run the listing. Uh, let me do an LS minus LTR. So we currently have a log that's running right here. So we can tail minus F those logs to see what's going on. So there is some work going on behind the scenes. Now, you would have a terminal output here. Oh yeah, this is a terminal output. So I was saying that right when it was coming up. So uh, we have to really look carefully at a terminal output because if we have uh, some things, some checks that do not pass, uh, we would have those right here. But what's important for us to see here is operation succeeded. Now, if you have some warnings, certainly these warnings would appear uh, here. And if there are some things that you wanna take care of, uh, I would recommend that you do that. So um, operation succeeded, which means that uh, what I interpret by that is, is if I effectively try to perform a conversion of this single instance database to a rack, using this config file, I will succeed. And so let's go ahead and do that then. So um, in order for me to run the R config utility, remember I have to change uh, the verify from only to yes. And that is what I would do right now. So R config, uh, I would uh, edit the convert to rack admin managed XML file and make just one change to it. And that one change would be, I am trying to uh, the verify, I would change this from only uh, if I switch to insert mode to yes. Yes. Okay. So I am ready to attempt this conversion. So let's pray about this 
and then we launch it. So in order to convert to the rack, I would run my R config, convert, verify to yes. And then I'll start the conversion. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So um, I would run the same R config command. And there is going to be terminal output now. I can tell the logs normally as I did the last time. Uh, let me close this one, ls minus LTR. Uh -oh, I'm typing in capital letters. So ls minus LTR. Now, the most recent log would be this one. So I would tell minus F that log to see what's going on. At the same time, it is going to be, uh, once this kicks off, which it already has, there is going to be some terminal output uh, that we would see here as well. So let's give it some time. This process typically takes about five, maybe 10 minutes, averagely, plus or minus. So um, I would probably be quiet here while uh, this runs. So just to make this a little interesting, um, I will open up a new party session. Um, that way I can see um, if I do have, I don't have one here now. Let's let's create one. So let's see here. I'm just going to pick that IP because my IP is 11. Now we're already beginning to have our terminal output. So um, we would see um, Oracle at that. Let's go yes, and then I would go with Oracle as my password. I would just make this a little bit bigger here so that you guys see. Um, hopefully I'm fast enough and we can catch it before it finishes. Let's go 12, let's not make it too wild. I'm gonna do this right here. Um, and then I would CD to the lock location, which would be CD. Um, let's go here. Oh, I didn't change my font. Give me a second. For some reason, I didn't change my font. Appearance, change. I'm going to put it 12. Okay. And then I apply. And then I would just kind of bring this over here. So um, here I would CD to my U01 app. Oracle. CFG tools, R config, and then I LS minus LTR. And then the most recent log, I would tell that log so that we have both of them going at the same time. So as the logs are moving on the left side, you would see you know, what is happening on the terminal side. So it currently says it is converting our SI to rack database to a cluster database for that target. The database role is primary. And then of course, it is going to be telling you step-by-step step what it is doing. So why don't I pause, why don't I you know, um, mute myself and then we watch.
So as we continue to watch um, what's going on on the screen, it might be an opportunity for us to talk about um, the R config um, tool. Uh, so like I mentioned, so most of the information um, that you can get to start um, I mean, you can certainly, you know, run a Google, you know, uh, search to find out, you know, uh, what you possibly, you know, uh, can 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 get in terms of, you know, information regarding R config. So, like I said, some of the benefits, um, it is a lightweight utility um, in being used for the conversion of uh, a single instance database to a rack database uh, with no needed you know, additional configuration. So um, that utility gets installed by default uh, once you install the Oracle software uh, on your system. Now, it is a fully automated conversion process. Um, it does all the work under the hood for you. All you need to do is make some changes uh, to some parameters on the XML file. Now, it also has the ability to migrate non-ASM database, you know, uh, uh, single instances that have been installed on non-Oracle, on non-ASM, uh, it can migrate those, of course, to ASM file systems. It creates uh, the RAC database instances on all the specified nodes, as well as it starts up the RAC database instances on those specified nodes, right? And most importantly, it registers uh, that database uh, with the cluster resource services as well. Now, what the downside uh, of this utility certainly is um, there is a lot of, you know, uh, stop and start of your database. So there is downtime. So it restarts your database several times as it continues to make uh, this uh, these changes or this conversion from single instance to rack. Uh, but overall, I think, um, it is a cool, there, there, there are not too many moving parts on this as opposed to, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the database configuration assistant method uh, to convert a single instance to a rack uh, database. So at this point, uh, it, it, is, it has added the database instances. It is adding our redo logs. Now, if you want to maybe look a little more, uh, we can head over to our second node on our rack cluster and we can, you know, just to see if, you know, um, alert logs and all of that stuff has been, has been set up. So Oracle, Diag, Diag Location, RGBMS, and then let's see uh, what we have here. So as of this point, not yet, uh, but eventually uh, we're gonna be able to see an entry here for our SI uh, to rack uh, database, um, an entry, a folder for the alert log, uh, for the diagnostic, you know, uh, destination for for that database.
All right, so at this point, um, we already have uh, the SI to rack uh, diagnostic uh, destination folder created in here. So we can certainly go through that. For note two, we can look at the trace files and we can tell maybe the outlet log on this side to see what's going on. So we already have that instance already um, set up on the second node of our cluster. So we're just gonna look here. So far things are going good. Like I said, it takes typically, you know, uh, 10 plus or minus minutes. It could be maybe, you know, uh, 10, 12 or 15 minutes. Uh, hoping it doesn't take too long, too much uh, longer than that. Now, um, and, and, and in my opinion, I, I don't know uh, how this affects the database size if the time is going to change. Um, I don't think it does, uh, but I may be wrong. All right, look at that. So um, our terminal uh, came back and um, let's look at what we have on our terminal screen. So um, we finally have an operation succeeded. Um, our database type, this is the home. Um, the database type is admin managed. The instance IDs are, like I mentioned, one and two on the corresponding nodes. So let's go ahead and test uh, this, you know, ascertain the status of these databases. So right now, what we are going to see here, um, let's have a control CTL. Uh, let's, take, let's take a look at the status of our database, minus D, um, SI rack, SI to rack. Let's take a look at that. All right, so it says our instance SI to rack one is running on node one, on, on the rack node one. SI to rack two is running on rack node two. Uh, let's take a look at the configuration of this database. So S server control config uh, database or DB minus D. Um, let's look at the configuration of that database. Okay, so um, we're looking at the database names and the unique names are the same, uh, like I mentioned earlier on the SP file, uh, the password file as well. And of course, the these groups and what we really wanted to see, remember in the beginning, we had type single, currently we have type rack. Um, in the beginning, we had database instances, it was just one with the SI to rack, but now we have two instances, SI to rack one, SI to rack two. On the configured nodes before the conversion, it was only on rack node one. And after the conversion, it is rack node two. And of course, it's an admin managed uh, rack database. So there you have it uh, folks, um, using this tool um, in less than maybe 20 minutes, uh, you are able to convert a single instance database uh, to a RAS database. Of course, you know, making sure that you satisfy all the prerequisites that we mentioned um, at the beginning of, of the video. So um, just to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, we see what's going on PS uh, minus EF grep Pimon, uh, we have our instance of SI to rack one. Let's log into this instance. Let's go into this instance. So I'm gonna export. The, um, the reason I'm running an export is let's take a look at our, uh, let's, let's, let's actually edit our Etsy or a tab file. And then we can add um, an entry for that. So uh, let's go here. I'm gonna take it all the way till the end. Um, and I'm gonna add, that an entry for that instance. So that way I can source my environmental variables.
I'm actually going to delete this entry here um, and replace it with uh, this. So to the end, and I want to make sure that I do that on both nodes. So this I would add on node two as well, just so that it makes it easier for me to source my environment. And I would insert mode and then I would paste this. But here on node two, the instance running on node two would be rack two, not rack one. You want to be careful with that. Okay. So now that I've done this, I'm going to save it, WQ, and then I'm going to source that environment. Um, SI2 rack one. And then I'm going to SQL plus as sysdba. Now, while I'm in here, I'm just going to run a generic select instance name status from GV dollar instance. So not V dollar instance, GV dollar instance. So that tells me, that should tell me that, you know, the instances are all in an open state. So there you have it. I hope you like this content. Um, if you did, please hit the like button. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, share the video uh, among your, your network. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I would see you in the next video.